Today's topic has to do with understanding perfect squares and square roots. The essential question is, what are perfect squares and how do you find square roots? So we'll dive into some vocab real quick. Um, here are some examples of numbers that are considered perfect squares. So these are some numbers that are considered perfect squares and there are many, many more numbers that are also considered perfect squares, but here are the first uh, few of them, okay? 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 169, 196, 225, 256, and so on and so forth. And I want you to write down why do you think these numbers are perfect squares. Before you write that down, why don't you take a look, about, look at what I've prepared right here. So the first example was 1. 1 is considered a perfect square. Here's what it would look like. 4 was also considered a perfect square. Here's what it looks like when I build it. 9 is also considered a perfect square. Here's what it looks like when I build it. Here's 16. Here's 25. Okay? And what I meant by saying I built it, I meant that I took tiles, and this right here is composed of 25 tiles, okay? This is composed of 16 tiles, 9 tiles, 4 tiles, and 1 tile. So take a second right now and write down why do you think these numbers are perfect squares? All right, now comes the part about square roots. This is a square root symbol. It looks like this, okay? Um, they, they're also called radical symbols. A square root symbol can also be called a radical sign. So it can be called a radical symbol or a radical sign. When you see it, you should be asking yourself, what number multiplied by itself will equal the number inside the sign? That number is the answer, okay? So right here I have the square root of four. What is the square root of four? So I'm gonna show you, I have built it also right over here square root of 4, and I'm going to give you this first answer right now. The square root of 4 is 2. Okay? Think about how I got 2. Here's 4, which is a perfect square, because look, it's a perfect square because it forms a square when you build it out of tiles, out of um, uniform tiles, okay? Tiles that are the same size, same shape, um, and all that, okay? The next question on your notes asked you the square root of 9. Here, is, here are 9 tiles right here. 9 is a perfect square. So what is the square root of 9? You should have gotten 3. Think about how I got 3. Okay, the next question asks you the square root of 64. And right here there is, you know, 64 is a perfect square. And the square root of 64 is 8. Okay? And I did that motion because I was counting the sides of it. So it's an 8 by 8. So the square root of 64 is 8. All right, number 4. It, says, it asks you the square root of 10. Well, notice what I built right here. I have, um, there's 10 tiles right here. and 10 obviously is not a perfect square because, well, 9 is a perfect square, but when I have that 10 right there, it's definitely not a perfect square because it does not form a square when I build it. So the answer to the square root of 10 is going to be between 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3, 4. Between 3 and 4. Okay? So... While you're thinking about that, between three and four, um, if you don't have a calculator, you, you probably can't do that when you're one in your head. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what you would do on your calculator if you're confronted with a number that's not a perfect square. So we have square root of 10. So what you would do on this calculator is you'd first find the square root button. And I see that the square root button is right here. See, it's in uh, light blue. So on this particular calculator, I gotta go second, and then that button right there and so you'll see the radical sign, okay? And I was looking for the square root of 10, so I'm gonna type in 10, and then I'm going to press enter. So you're gonna see it's um, a decimal right there. So 
my answer of between three and four, it's correct, but it's not entirely, um, it's not entirely very accurate just because it's some number between three and four. Well, when I typed it in my calculator, it is approximately three and sixteen hundredths. Notice I use the approximation sign, three and sixteen hundredths. I rounded it to the nearest hundredth, okay? So if you're confronted with a number that is not a perfect square um, and you are allowed to use a calculator, that is what you could do, is type it in like that, okay? But if it is a perfect square, I'm hoping that you'll memorize those. So down here for the summary, I want you to answer this question, how are perfect squares and square roots related? If you don't answer this question, you will not receive points on the notes. And then go ahead and flip it to the back so we can work on these other problems. The back problems want you to practice finding square roots and perfect squares. So maybe we can do, a, you should um, pause the video after we do a couple together and then you can unpause the video and check your progress, okay? So the square root of 64 is 8, the square root of 144 is 12. If you're, le if you're asked, thinking how I got that, I would just go 12 times 12 equals 144. Or you could think, what number multiplied by itself will equal 144? And it is 12, because 12 times 12 is 144. 8 times 8 is 64, so the square root of 64 is 8. What number multiplied by itself is 196? It is 14, because 14 times 14 is 196. The square root of 121, you ask yourself what number multiplied by itself equals 121, and that's 11, because 11 times 11 is 121. And again, the square root of 64, you should know that by now, okay? You should pause the video now and try to do the rest. Here's what you should get. Now it says try these cubic roots. These are um, more, these are eighth grade problems, but I feel that many of you can answer them and figure them out. So the cubic root of eight is two, okay? And the reason being is two times two times two is eight. So try and figure out the cubic root of 27. And you should get three, because three times three times three is 27. All right, down to the next chunk section. Three squared, or three to the second power, or three to the power of two. That's nine, because three times three is nine. Okay, 15 times 15 is 225. Four squared is 16. 11 to the second power is 121. Eight squared is 64. You should pause the video and try to do the rest on your own. And this is what you should get. Okay, the next section um, are more challenging problems to extend your thinking. And at first it looks a little bit intimidating. You see the square root of 169, 196. But what I want you to do is break it up and it's gonna look a little bit more friendly to you once you do this. So you're gonna break it up into the square root of 169 divided by the square root of 196. Well, the square root of 169 is 13. The square root of 196 is 14. So the square root of 169, 196 is 13 fourteenths. Try that same strategy on this next problem. And that's what you should get. Same strategy here too. What number multiplied by itself equals 36? It's six. One number multiplied by itself equals 49. It's 7. So the square root of 36 49ths is 6 sevenths. Okay? And just to kind of prove to you that that's the correct answer, you can go 6 sevenths times 6 sevenths and kind of think in your head 6 sevenths times 6 sevenths. That's 36 49ths. 
So the square root of 36 49ths is 6 sevenths, okay? All right, here's some backwards thinking. The square root of w is going to equal 8. So what is w? What is the value of w? Okay, think about it, and you should get uh, 64. Because when I substitute this value of 64 in for w, the square root of 64 is 8. So that makes that equation true, okay? Think about what you'll do here. It's similar to maybe something up here and where you get the fraction as an answer. So what did I just show you over here? What you would do is you would go 9 tenths times 9 tenths and you'd get 81 one hundredths. And that's your answer. That's the value of t. All right, these ones are really interesting. Okay, this is, remember this is a grouping symbol, so do it's in the grouping symbol first. So 12 to the second power is 144. And when you find the square root of 144, you get 12. Okay, try this one. 7 to the second power is 49, but remember there's a square root or a radical symbol above it, so the square root of 49 is 7. So 7 squared and take the square root of it is 7. So what do you think the answer to this one would be? Think about it and then answer it. Your answer would be x. Okay? Now you will, for the summary, and you must do the summary or you do not get points, you're going to pick any five of the most challenging problems from above Rewrite them from rewrite them below and solve them. Okay, so if you thought um, this one was challenging, you would simply rewrite that problem like that, and the question, and then the answer, and circle it. Okay, and you're gonna do that for five any five problems that you see up here that um, you felt were more challenging for you. Have a good day.